nematophagous fungi. Soil nematodes are small roundworms, some of which are parasitic on plants and animals and may cause severe damage to crops and livestock. A group of soil fungi are natural enemies of nematodes. These fungi have developed different mechanisms of capturing, killing and digesting their prey. The fungi have the ability to change their morphology so that nematodes may adhere to them or be captured in mechanical traps. For instance, nematodes are captured in constricting rings or they are held fast by sticky branches. A captured nematode is inescapably gripped by the fungus. The nematophagous fungi capture nematodes either with special mycelial structures or with their spores, as in the endoparasitic fungi. Some fungi attack nematodes with motile zoospores. Others infect their hosts with adhesive conidia. Endoparasitic fungi often live as obligate parasites in the soil. The uniflagellate zoospores of Catenaria anguilluli are two to three micrometers wide and move rapidly in the water film on an agar surface. They are chemically attracted to nematodes and aggregate at the mouth or other natural orifices. Here the nematode Pangrelus redivivus has been immobilized by cold treatment. After contact, the zoospores produce an adhesive, withdraw their flagella, form a cell wall and become attached to the surface of the host. From the encysted zoospore, a germ tube is formed that penetrates the nematode. The same situation seen in the scanning electron microscope. A few zoospores still have their flagella, while others are already encysted. Following penetration in the mouth region, trophic hyphae develop within the nematode and digest its contents. Segments of the hyphae develop into zoosporangia 10 to 12 hours after infection. They subsequently mature and produce evacuation tubes. A few minutes after the zoospores have differentiated inside the zoosporangia, they are released. The release is shown here somewhat faster than real time. The zoospores can now attack new nematodes. Drechmeria coniospora, another endoparasitic fungus, uses non-motile spores called conidia with small adhesive buds. When a nematode comes into contact with the conidia, these adhere to the chemosensory structures in the mouth region. In this scanning electron micrograph, conidia are seen adhering with their adhesive buds to the cuticle at the tip of the host's head. They produce apressoria and penetrate the nematode cuticle. The fungal mycelium, here seen in focus, grows through the host and digests its contents. After digestion of the nematode, conidiophores protrude through the cuticle. The conidia are often produced in clusters. These contain 30 to 40 conidia.
The conidia are produced in succession. After a short while, adhesive buds are formed on the conidia by which they may stick to new nematodes and infect them. The genus Nematoctonus uses two infection strategies. Some species produce adhesive spores, like the endoparasitic fungi. Others form adhesive traps on their hyphae, like the nematode trapping fungi. And therefore, Nematoctonus links the two types. The spores of Nematoctonus liosporus form a sticky knob at one end. The structure of the knobs is best seen in covered microscope preparations. The spore adheres with its sticky substance anywhere on the nematode cuticle and is not dislodged when the nematode moves. Like other endoparasitic fungi, only one spore is necessary to kill the nematode. As the infection continues, the nematode becomes immobilized and the fungus begins to digest its host. The nematode trapping strategy is used by Nematoctonus concurrens with the aid of its hourglass shaped knobs which are equipped with an adhesive substance. The head of a nematode is here seen in contact with a trap and the nematode is attached to it. In spite of its efforts, the nematode is firmly gripped. The motility of the nematode decreases after the fungus has penetrated its cuticle. After some time, the nematode is completely filled with trophic hyphae. In the head region, lower right, the trap from which the lethal infection started can be seen. The nematode trapping fungi have developed a wide variety of trapping structures. Dactylaria candida captures nematodes with the aid of adhesive knobs. Monacrosporium cyanopagum uses adhesive branches. In Arthrobotrys oligospora, nematodes are trapped in an adhesive three-dimensional network. While in Dactylaria brocopaga, nematodes are trapped mechanically in constricting rings. The ability to use nematodes as nutrients increases the survival chances of these fungi. The first example of a nematode trapping fungus is Dactylaria candida. On the growing mycelium, two to three micrometer wide adhesive knobs are formed. They arise at the end of a delicate stalk. Here, these spherical traps are seen in the scanning electron microscope. Sometimes the traps are detached from the mycelium and carried away by the nematode. In other cases, however, the nematode is held on the mycelium by attachment to several knobs. Within an hour, the movements of the captured nematode gradually decrease. Whether the knobs are attached to the underlying mycelium or detached, the nematode cuticle is penetrated by a hypha. Inside the nematode, an infection bulb is formed. When the infection bulb is fully developed, the collapse of the internal structure starts. Subsequently, vegetative hyphae develop within the nematode and at the same time new hyphae grow out from the knobs. About two days after the start of the infection, a regular mycelium with new adhesive knobs has developed.
Monacrosporium cyanopagum is another nematode trapping fungus which captures nematodes by means of adhesive branches. These consist of one or several cells about two or three times the width of the basal hypha. When the nematode makes contact with these branches, it is trapped and held fast, at first only to the right-hand trap. In spite of the efforts of the nematode, the trap still remains attached both to the nematode and to the underlying mycelium. Attempts to get free lead to further attachment to the trap on the left. Here, the nematode is captured by two of the five cells of a branch. It is impossible for the nematode to free itself. In this time-lapse sequence, the effective adhesive is seen to the left. Inside the trap, there is vigorous cytoplasmic movement. During penetration of the cuticle, vacuoles accumulate in the trap cells. The movements of the nematodes slow down as the infection proceeds. The death of the nematode follows. Trophic hyphae develop within the nematode. A new trap is being formed outside. The infection process is now followed in optical section. Within two hours after contact, an infection bulb develops. Note the very thin penetration tube. The infection bulb continues to grow until, after a further one and a half hours, it becomes as wide as a branch cell. The infection process is now seen in a sequence lasting 36 hours. During the nematode's futile struggles, hyphae penetrate through the cuticle. The traps become vacuolated and trophic hyphae proliferate within the nematode. The nematode is digested and its contents absorbed. At the same time, the external mycelium develops further and traps are formed in the vicinity of the nematode. The third example of a nematode trapping fungus is Arthrobotrys oligospora. Its three-dimensional